Plants are amazing organisms. Look at this. I'm downstairs in the basement in the middle of winter. And this, this guy, this plant has somehow decided it wants to live indoors in the middle of winter in my basement. How cool is that? It definitely has a home here. It's staying. Wow, it's bright down here. Hi everyone. Um, so I am down in my uh, basement, my, my business, my inventory room, my shipping room, um, ready to do another task. Uh, that small business owners have to do every once in a while. Um, so I thought I might just film it um, to give you an idea of some of the things we have to go through on occasion. So I am down in my shipping room, as I said, and uh, I'm kind of organizing things, uh, putting things away, getting ready for I'm the year. Today. But um, I'm also filing sales taxes for the fourth quarter, which is something we need to do. And uh, while I was doing that, I realized I had some other projects to do uh, that today was a good day to do them on. So I'm going to bring you along. Hopefully you find it interesting. Um, talk a little bit about the process and why we're doing it and, you know, what we do about it when it happens. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to set up and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay, so um, as I make my way over to the other side of uh, of the room that I use downstairs for all of this. Um, just an example of sort of what I'm talking about today. These are all packages that have been packed up and are waiting to get sent out. Um, so like many resellers, what I do when someone orders an item before I bill them, because I only want to bill them once, it's, I, I feel like it's sort of a pain to do two-part billing, but I do know lots of resellers like doing that. Um, and actually, two-part billing would save me for what, from what I'm doing today, but it's such a rare occurrence um, that someone doesn't pay you. Uh, I like to get things packed up um, and ready to go as, as soon as um, I'm able to invoice someone. So these packages are all recent purchases ready to get shipped out. Um, so what I'm doing today uh, is I am going to deal with a couple boxes here. I'm gonna deal with these three boxes. And uh, I'm going to tell you what these are in a minute. Um, but uh, I'm going to set up over here, get the material I need, and do a little unboxing for you. I'm going to show you what's in these three boxes. Quite frankly, I'm not sure I remember, but it will be fun to find out. Okay, so I'm all set up. Um, this may actually be the first video I've ever filmed where I'm standing up doing something in my, in my space. Uh, usually I'm sitting down and presenting something or talking about things as I'm unboxing or unbagging them. But today I need to stand up because I actually need to open those three boxes that I just showed you. They are not things I purchased for myself. So um, this morning I woke up, decided I needed to do my, my sales tax for the fourth quarter, get some of my income tax uh, documentation ready for next year. And I decided to um, put together a list of things I needed to order, supplies I needed to order for the upcoming months. And as I was doing that, I realized these three boxes were taking up a lot of space um, in my shipping room. So I need to open them and take care of what's inside. Now, another thing I did this morning is I kind of took a look at uh, the sort of sales that my business had last year. And it was a, I'm very fortunate. It was a very good year for me, especially because this is not my primary income. Um, I shipped out over 1,200 packages last year. Um, and that's relevant for what I want to talk about today because um, of those 1,200 packages that I put together, um, someone claimed an item. I wrapped up the item uh, in an appropriate way, depending on what type of item it was. I boxed it up, I sealed it, I weighed it, I measured it, I sent an invoice. Out of those 1,200 or more um, boxes, for me, only seven of them went unpaid, um, which I know is unusual. I'm very fortunate. I know resellers who have uh, a really tough time tracking down people after after someone claims an item from them. But for me, I've been pretty fortunate this year. Um, so that means I was left with seven boxes that I needed to uh, 
to deal with. Sometimes it was just one item in the box. Other times it was multiple items. Now, four of those boxes um, I opened immediately after, um, after the sale. Uh, I never got contacted by those four people. Um, so when I don't get contacted by somebody, I usually give people a week or two. I know a lot of resellers have a, have a different timeline than I do, but um, I have the luxury of giving people a week or two to get, get a hold of me. Um, but those four people never did. So I uh, was able to, in many cases, hunt down the person who also another person who was interested in that same item. And in three of the four cases, there were other people who were bidding on those items. So I was actually able to get those items to those people. So I was pretty, pretty excited about that. And what that means is I'm saving a lot of um, wrapping material. I'm not wasting a lot. And I try to save as much as I can, even when I have to fully unbox something, but it's not always possible. Um, that fourth item uh, is something I had to return to my inventory because there wasn't another buyer that I remembered being interested in it. These three boxes that I'm left with though are a little bit different and they've been down in my, my area for a couple months. These are actually three buyers who were in contact with me. They were people who sent me their information. In two cases, they're people who have bought from me previously. Um, and because I do what I do, I give people grace when they say they need time or, um, or they wanna make other arrangements. One of the buyers, for instance, I made arrangements with them to actually physically uh, deliver the box to them. However, for various reasons, for these three purchases, um, uh, all three of the buyers went silent at some point and after multiple communications just never followed up. And that happens, it's business. Um, and that's why I don't get all bent out of shape about it. Um, I think in most business uh, arenas, this kind of thing happens a lot and it's not happening a lot for me. So at this point, um, it's, it's manageable for me. Um, so I do need to actually put these um, boxes away, return the, the items to my inventory, perhaps bring them to the store. I'm gonna decide actually, once I see what sort of items are in these boxes, what I'm going to do about them. But I thought I would just show you the sorts of uh, process that um, we have to go through as resellers when people don't claim the items that they, um, that they uh, did claim. And I'm kind of excited because I don't think I remember most of what's in these boxes. So it's kind of like an unboxing um, to begin with. So I'm just gonna move my camera back a little bit and we'll take it box by box and see, see what there is in store. Um, so I'm kind of, yeah, I'm excited to see this. So let me just adjust my camera a bit. That looks good. I've never been so far away from the camera. So I'm just gonna bring the, um, the stack of boxes over and start with this small one. Um, this small one, I don't even know where it was meant to go. I've covered up all of the purchaser's um, information just in case someone wanted to pause the video and take a look, just keep people's information private. But um, when I do this, I try very hard uh, to um, have a situation where all of the material that I used is reusable. Um, as you can see, in two out of the three cases here, even the boxes that I used are brand new boxes. Um, the material inside, it's easy for me to, um, to reuse uh, tissue paper. Um, I even put a, a little Garden Guy bill card, many of you know that, inside all my purchases, or all of my, um, the purchases that people make from me. Um, and, you know, I am kind of a nerd too. Most of the things that I ship out um, kind of get a little glow up before I ship them. Um, I love spreading the love of plants uh, and seeds. So this is the kind of very common package topper that I put on, you know, wrap it up with twine, put a packet of seeds in there, maybe a little plant sticker. I just like to, I just like to make it a little special for people. Um, you're spending money on yourself or for a gift for others, I can give you a little something in return um, just to make it special. Um, so all of this I'm gonna try to reuse, even the twine. Um, I try to reuse. Um, I carefully, you know, remove the seed packet. I'll be able to re remove, reuse the seed packet. Um, the one, probably one thing I'm not gonna be able to save is the tissue paper that's on the outside of this package. Um, but I will do my best to save the bubble wrap. I actually don't know what's in here. Oh, I know it's a green bubble wrap. So that, I was using that um, in October and November for Christmas sales. So I try my best when I'm packing to only use three pieces of tape. Um, I hope that 
makes it easier for the person who's opening a package, but it certainly makes it easier for me when I'm trying to reuse material because I know where I typically put those three pieces of tape and I can make, make little cuts in order to open up the package and be able to reuse the material. So I've opened up the two sides. Now there should be just one piece of tape here in the middle. I'm just gonna locate it. There it is. I just do a very small slice. And as you can see, I've reopened this bubble wrap so I should be able to use it all. So that's a nice section of bubble wrap that will get reused for somebody else's, um, somebody else's package. So, I'm thinking this is a Christmas item just because of when, um, what I use. Oh, I remember this. Oh yeah, I'm surprised that this, the person who bought this actually was very interested in it and contacted me several times afterwards, but then just disappeared. Um, I'm also a big fan of using really soft things like tissue and uh, bathroom tissue uh, to um, cradle ceramics because I, I um, sell a lot of ceramics. So I try to use the soft material. Um, so this is uh, one of those awesome Santa mugs, probably Christ, because there is a rhinestone eye in it with the candy cane handle. And I'm, I already know this is gonna go into my collection rather than back into my inventory for resale. I have a few of these and I decided I like them when they're in a larger mass. So this is one I will keep. I'll return it to my inventory and keep it. I'll also um, put out there, if you're already watching this video and you're like, oh my God, is he really gonna um, open up all these boxes in front of us? When I'm editing it, I will probably speed through some parts so it's not so boring, but um, right now I'm just gonna film the whole process and then decide what to do about it. So the next box um, is a priority box. So um, I have a system for determining whether or not to use a priority box with somebody, and it's usually based on their zip code. Um, in, from New Jersey, there are several zip codes where priority mailing is only a few cents more um, than uh, using um, a regular box and, and even using ground advantage. So I know if I'm shipping to zip codes that start with a one, a two, interestingly enough, a four, and some sixes, that the priority uh, uh, difference between um, ground advantage and priority is just a few cents. So I tend to use um, priority boxes because this 12 by 12 by eight box is very convenient for a lot of the sorts of things that I ship, particularly glass and ceramics, pottery. Um, these boxes are pretty sturdy. They're pretty sturdy. And I don't know if it's just psychological on my part, but using one of these priority boxes um, uh, from the US, United States Postal Service just makes me think that maybe they get a little bit more attention. I don't know if that's true. That's probably just in my head, but um, but yeah. Another thing I use a lot is this uh, craft wrapping uh, packing paper, um, newsprint. Um, and I recycle it whenever I can. So all of this will get recycled. I have a bin on the ground right now that I'm collecting it in. Um, and as you can see for this package, I used quite a bit. Um, it looks like this is probably a piece of glass based on the shape. So another Garden Guy Bill postcard, I'm gonna recycle that. Here's another sort of wrapping that I often do with the Monstera Deliciosa leaf, the Monstera plant, uh, with, some, um, with some seeds. And uh, another, it looks like there are two items in this box. So let's see what wasn't claimed here. Um, let me open up the large one first. Um, I always cut the twine, not that you need to know step by step, but I'm gonna talk since I'm doing this. I always cut the, cut the twine next to the knot so that I can reuse it. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just, like a lot of people, I like to reuse things. So I will reuse these seeds as well. Even though they're last year's seeds, you may not know this, but the germination rate for most wildflower seeds, which these are, um, actually doesn't start to diminish for most of them until three or four years. So if you're a recipient of any seeds from me and you're like, oh, I don't have time to plant them this year, you can actually just pop them in your refrigerator. And you don't need to actually, you can just keep them in a cool, dry place. Um, but if you pop them in your refrigerator, you really extend the life expectancy for those seeds. Um, I know I didn't say I was gonna give you a gardening lesson while I was doing this, but why not? So this piece, because it's probably some sort of um, maybe a swung vase or glass or something, uh, I have a bit more tape on. So salvaging this, um, 
this uh, bubble wrap is going to be another sort of project for me. I probably won't be using this bubble wrap to wrap something again. I probably will use this type of bubble wrap as a cushion um, because as you can see, it's not, it's not a nice, perfect rectangle, but it will serve as a good cushion inside of a box. So here is the item. Um, actually, it has a bulbous base, so I'm guessing, again, I don't know what it is. Maybe a decanter? That's what it is. So this is how I wrap the decanters that have big bases but a fragile stem. Um, this is a milk glass de decanter in the grape pattern. Um, I always put one of these tubes on the top, and then inside the tube, I've wrapped it really tightly with uh, some nice soft tissue paper. Um, and I can uh, reuse all of this. I'm going to unwrap it, just as you would when you get it at home. Yeah, and this is a beautiful milk glass decanter. Um, I think it's Italian, I'm not sure, um, but this is probably something, oh, and that's what the second package is. This is the stopper. This is probably something I'll end up bringing to the store. Um, these decanters do well in the store. And uh, this one has a particularly amazing stopper. It's pretty big, which is why it's probably Italian. Um, the Italians like to go big with their, with their stoppers. It could be an American glass company, I don't know. But look at this thing, it's pretty big. And look at the gorgeous, um, the gorgeous detail on it. So this is the second item that wasn't claimed. However, the person was in communication with me for a while. So that's probably gonna end up at the store. And then this last box, um, I may lower the camera a little bit so you can see. This last box is big, which makes me think it's either a big item or it's multiple items. So yeah, this is a big box. My guess is multiple items. Um, and you know, I try not to use boxes this big. Um, this is the kind of box that would probably need to go UPS. But now that I remember it, this was meant to be a local delivery where I, I volunteered to actually drive and drop it off to this person. Um, but that didn't work out. So yeah, and there's a lot of reusable material in a box like this, because often what I do is I will just fold brand new bubble wrap, um, and this is the large scale bubble wrap, to cushion whatever delicate items are in here. All of this paper will get reused. Oh, and I can see this is from a Christmas time sale. So um, yeah, so here's why I'm gonna need to move the box just to uh, open some of these. So I already know this is a uh, reproduction, or it's a rerun of the Christopher Radko Christmas, one of the, Christ the Christmas candle, um, candle holders. And it's this really great, I'm probably not gonna open it fully so I can save the bubble wrap, but I'll show you. It's this really great ceramic elf or pixie knee hugger. It's a ceramic candle holder in a really rad box. So I'm gonna carefully unwrap that later. But that's one thing that wasn't claimed. Um, yeah, there's a lot in here. So here's another item. Um, this one should be fairly easy to open. And again, my perspective here is, it's, these aren't bad people. Um, things happen, um, I get it. Um, it is it, it is nice when people communicate with you. I've had multiple people say, you know, Bill, I'm really sorry. I know I claimed that thing from you last week, but something just happened in my house. Something happened to a loved one. I got sick. I'm not gonna be able to follow through with the purchase. That is so fine with me. Um, it's absolutely okay. Life happens. Um, it's just this idea of falling out of contact with someone when you've been in contact with them. Um, and actually, as you can see, and this is what I'm trying to demonstrate today, when you've taken so much care to uh, pack up people's objects um, so that they're safe. And again, I can already tell, this is a delicate ceramic that I'm opening, um, and it's part of a set that was purchased by this individual. Um, so, you know, a lot of care went into, into packing this. And a lot of material. That's a kind of another thing I'm trying to illustrate today, that a lot of material went into packing it. Okay, so let me just carefully get this out. This is a Lefton, this is part of a Lefton set. It's a votive holder. And um, there are two uh, salt and pepper shakers in here as well. It probably is those, these two because I sold these as a set. So I'm gonna open these at a different time. These will go back to the inventory 
for sale next Christmas, or they may go to the store, one of the two. Um, so there's a few other things in here. I also use a lot of these when, so I'm guessing there's a big piece of glass in here because I tend to use a lot of these recycled airbags when there is a big piece of glass. Um, so here's another item and there, there are a couple that look like this. Um, and these are just wrapped in paper. So I don't have bubble wrap around them. So, oh, because they are Christmas candles. They are these cute little blue teddy bear Christmas candles holding, um, holding a candy cane. And there are three of these in here, I remember, um, because I thought they were super cute and debated whether or not I should actually uh, sell those. So those also are in here and those will go to the store next Christmas. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. And it looks like there's only one more piece and it's, this is the reason it's so big. What is this? This is really big. <laughs> Maybe it's a swung vase. Um, yeah, look how big this is. So, so this one was also wrapped with the large scale bubble paper. When I have really um, big glass, I tend to use the bigger bubbles for more cushion. Um, but as you can see, because of the way that I tape it, um, I'm going to be able to recycle this entire, this entire um, length of bubble wrap. It's all intact. The whole length is intact here. But I have a second, um, a second layer, and the second layer almost always has some more tape on it. So um, this one will end up being cushion, cushioning in a package. Um, and this is sort of the first video of this nature that I've ever done where I'm unwrapping things that are already wrapped. I don't know if this is interesting because I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, but the real purpose of the video and the reason I named it Unclaimed Freight was sort of to illustrate a behind the scenes view of what resellers go through. Um, a lot of people go through this a lot more than I do. I'm fortunate and I'm gonna keep saying that. Oh, I remember what this is. I remember what this is. Um, a lot of people go th through this a lot more than I do. So I thought it would be just interesting for people to see the process. Uh, what happens when we sell something and actually the sale never, never goes through. This is an amazing piece of glass. And I will probably bring this to the store. This is a piece of uh, the persimmon Viking. They often call this the helicopter. Um, propeller bowl or propeller bowl. Yeah. But it's actually just called the low console dish. Yeah. This is a beautiful piece. Um, and now, yeah, I'm remembering, um, I'm remembering about this sale. Um, so, you know, I may bring, th bring this to another sale. There were a lot of people interested in this. I actually may go back to that recording of the sale, um, and see if the person who was, um, after the person who claimed it still interested in it because it is a beautiful piece of glass. So I'll need to decide what to do about that. But I will say about this last box, it's always disappointing when someone doesn't follow up with their, um, with their promise to pay, particularly when they were in touch with you and you don't know the reason why they didn't follow up with you. It's even more troublesome when that person is another reseller on social media. And in the case of this last box, that's the case. So, so, so today I was just introducing you to one of the, one of the things I need to go through as a reseller. Um, I'm going to try to edit this video down so you're not watching me unpack things the whole time. Um, but uh, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, the last time I did uh, a behind the scenes video, people seem to, some people at least seem to really like it. So I thought I would try some more and I needed to do this project anyway. So I thought I would bring you all along. Uh, so with that, I am going to clean up and organize all of this material that I will reuse in some fashion, figure out what to do with all of the items that are being returned to the inventory or being sold elsewhere, or in the case of the little Santa mug going into my collection. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. If you're subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love that you like hanging out with me every once in a while. I have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you know, consider subscribing. This is the kind of thing I do. If you're interested in it, you can follow along um, or leave a comment or a thumbs up or set notifications for when my next video comes out. It's all good. Um, and with that, everyone, um, thank you so much for joining me and uh, I'll see you in a few days.